You only got 90 minutes to go through about 90 questions, which means you got about one minute to answer each question. I'm A plus, net plus, security plus certified with no experience. What recommendations do you have for at home learning to use as experience for an entry level job? So this is where you go out there and get your lab on. So there are a whole bunch of labs out there that you can purchase or get access to from somebody presenting a training course, or maybe they might even sell the labs independently. So you can use the labs to get your lab on and actually learn how to use this stuff that you've uh, put this knowledge into practical application. I should put it that way. Also, being that you are certified, I don't know what type of time you have, but maybe you can do some volunteer work. Go to a community center, go up to a local school around your way and be like, ask them if you can be the uh, unofficial IT person. <laughs> so you can go in there and start tinkering and fixing stuff in and around the way so that you can uh, start using that as documentation to uh, add to your resume. You can go out there, I'm pretty sure Amazon. Uh, matter of fact, Professor Black Ops, if you go check my last video, my last live stream I did, Professor Black Ops, he was actually talking about, he uses Amazon, not Amazon, I keep saying Amazon, uh, Microsoft Azure, or is he using an Amazon instance? I don't know which one he, I think he's messing with cloud, Amazon cloud. Anyway, he's spinning up clouds over there to where he can run labs and, you know, just kind of tinker around on little virtual labs that he creates because all of that could be document, my nose is itching, all of that could be uh, counted as experience. I mean, you can reword that stuff up in certain ways ways to make it seem like to make it seem like something legit but anyways your best bet i mean congrats to getting certified now truth be told that should be enough for you to land an entry-level job without experience because like i told you guys in the previous live stream uh help desk type jobs or entry-level type jobs especially if you're coming out there with uh, a plus net plus security plus man they pretty much hire everybody for them positions so you should be good money over there but if not just look for activities you can do in and around the way man community center, church, schools, see if they got something going on. Just, just be honest about your intentions. Be like, hey, I'm trying to get into tech. I'm having a little issues right now finding a job because of my lack of experience. I want to know if I can come in here and set up some stuff for you, maintain some of this, maintain some of that, get everything running up at optimal speeds so that I can use this to put down for my info uh, on my resume. Then also use you as a reference for when it's time for me to go out there and find a job. So that's something you could possibly think about doing. I had problems getting the correct study materials for the A+, plus. took the exam and missed it by 10 points. Ooh, I know that hurts. Um, Listen, the very first time I took the A+, plus, I failed the A+, plus hardware certification as well, because I didn't study. That's why. And then I went back, I studied for like a week, and then I went back and passed it. And then I took the software or the, the part two, studied and passed it on the first time ago. But I, I do get, get what you're saying. So my number one gripe is people don't study. But then there are people that do study, and then they'll miss it by like 10 points and stuff like that. Now, now that could be attributed to test taking strategies. So here's what I tell people. When you guys go sit down and take the A plus test, understand it's a 90 minute test. You're going to have upwards of uh, 90 questions. And then out of the 90 questions, probably about four or five of them might be what are called PBQs, performance based questions. How the performance based questions work is really on some old click and drag this, drag, drag and drop this over here. Click on this button, read this problem, click on this button and type this information in. That's kind of how it is. But you got to remember, you only got 90 minutes to go through about 90 questions, which means you got about one minute to answer each question. So I tell people, answer all the multiple choice questions first and then flag your PBQs so that you can come back and do them last because they're going to take more. They might take more time than the, the other questions would take. So that's one test taking strategy that you should try to consider employing if you haven't already tried that. Maybe that can possibly uh, help you out, I guess. But anyways, like I say, if it's not due to a lack of studying, it's due to a lack of uh, test taking strategies. Here's another test taking strategy to save you time. When you guys read these questions, right, go through, read the questions and then look at the answers. You only got like four answers to pick from. I can almost promise you at least two of them answers aren't going to have a damn thing to do with the question. If you quickly read the question, they try to get a general idea of what it's talking about. Uh, let's just say, I'm just going to make something up. Let's just say it asks you a question about what are the ways that a computer can connect to a device wirelessly? So we got cellular connections, 
We got Bluetooth connections and we got Wi-Fi connections, right? And let's just say the answers were wire, uh, were Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. And then one of the answers was GPS. And then the other answer was uh, IP version six, right? Like, let's just say that those were the actual answers. But when you go through, you read the questions and you're like, okay, they want to know about wireless connectivity. Then I look at my four answers and then I see two of them. One that has to do with GPS and one, one that just says IP version six. Well, off the jump, you could just throw those two away because, you know, they have nothing to do with the wireless connectivity aspect, right? So now we're down to what would I say? Uh, Bluetooth and, and Wi-Fi. Now, both of those answers could be correct, but then you would have to go back and reread the question to see exactly what are they asking you about wireless connectivity. So that way you can narrow it down to either selecting Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, right? So anyways, the, the whole point I'm trying to make is when you read the questions, don't spend two minutes reading the question, trying to figure out what it's asking you. Read the question and within like 30 seconds, you should be able to understand, okay, they want to know this. And then I scan the answers and I quickly figure out, okay, at least two of these have nothing to do with what they're asking. Now we're down to two. So now I got a 50-50 shot of getting this thing right. Let me go back and reread the question. Okay, this is what they really want to know. Okay, this is the correct answer. So that's a test taking strategy that you can possibly employ as well or utilize as well if you haven't tried it. Because you know, you don't want to get caught up wasting time. You got upwards of 90 questions on the A plus exam and you got 90 minutes to answer upwards of 90 questions. So we're looking at one minute per question. You ain't got time to be sitting there all day long trying to figure out what the hell's going on with a question. You need to hurry and quickly decipher that thing, answer the best, choose the best answer and move on. All right. Hopefully that makes sense.